Cissou. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your feet! Hello and welcome to Seagull Social, Season 4, Episode 45. Holy smokes. Ryan, I know the last episode this that I missed out because of my internet. Four. It's season four still. This is not it's season, season four. four. <laughs> it says it on the other title, the last one. Because funny enough, Ryan, it's I not, do it so I can write it. The audience. No, I'm not. It's still season them. four. I hold all the power unless you change the YouTube title. Anyway, welcome to season four, episode 45. <laughs> I'm joined by Ryan, Maz and myself. I've made it this time. My internet hopefully won't play up. Um, boys, how are we? I think the last time we spoke, it was all doom and gloom, but there seems to be hope. Now, Maz, are you happy? Yeah, mate. Yeah, big Herzler, uh, the thirty-one-year-old from well, he's German-American, isn't he? Uh, we were just talking off air. The, the fact he's thirty-one is going to definitely be the new Luke Littler, isn't yeah. it? It's just going to mention every media outlet is just going to mention <laughs> the fact he's thirty-one for the rest of time. So, but no, that that genuinely, like, all joking. Oh, until he's thirty-two. Yeah, until he's into, he's not thirty one until he's thirty six. <laughs> but um he, uh what's it called? Yeah, it's actually gonna be mad. Like the fact that was it I read it was six senior players in the Brighton squad will be older than him, which is mad. Mm. So um yeah, hopefully it doesn't like mess up any like, you know, power dynamic in, in the sense of like the senior players thinking, Who's this thirty one year old coming in trying to tell us what to do? Hopefully that doesn't happen. But um yeah, yeah. look, I'll be honest, I don't I don't know tons about him. But he, yeah, he's 31. He, he got St. Pauli uh, promoted, which is always a good sign. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, an, it's a proper Brighton decision, isn't it? It's a proper Brighton manager, the Brighton way. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how it pans out. But apart from that, Ben, I'm good. Tired a little bit. Went on a, uh, had a wedding on the weekend uh, and I had a shoot today. But uh, yeah, we, we're alive and kicking in. Looks like Brighton got a new manager. So buzzing. Love that. And Ryan, yeah, like I said, doom gloom last week or the week before. Are you feeling a bit more positive about Brighton going into next season? And shockingly, seeing our social fashion, someone <laughs> dipped out. Uh, Ryan, I was going to ask you about how you're feeling. Apparently he made a joke and because me and Maz couldn't hear him, no one laughed and you just thought it was a really poor joke. But Ryan, try again and maybe we'll laugh this time. <laughs> No oh, more. No, hang on. What did I even say? <laughs> no more days of hurts was what I said, Ben. Um, oh, trying to get into oh, Euros good. fashion. That um, was good. But listen, it's it's one of them, isn't it? You've got to just take out the chin and move on, take the positives. But look, at least it isn't taking the positives of Graham Potter at the helm. Um, mm, and we true. can just move on from that god-awful rumour that was making me start to question my whole integrity of this football club. But yeah, no, um, looks very impressive. I've got to be honest. I've actually done a lot of research on it. Well, I say that. I don't want to be trying to pretend that I've got an opportunity Reading to Reading OBHFC's tweets yeah, as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> and LeBron James talking to Peter Crouch sort of vibes. But no, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling good about him. Like I've seen a lot of a lot of positivity. Um, and it's mm. a big risk, of course. It's a big, big risk. I'm sure we'll get into all of this. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask because straight off the bat, there's so much positivity around this guy coming in. Are we all lying to ourselves? And just try and act like everything is okay, but really, this is actually very risky and could shit. Well, shit could hit the fan. Man, it's like I, I don't know. I feel like are we just pretending that this is a really good thing, even though we've never yeah. heard of this bloke before in our lives? No, no, definitely. I wouldn't say it's like a sure thing because look, he's thirty-one years of age. He's he's a young manager. He's still got a lot of time in his career left. <laughs> it's only just begun. So yeah, it's not a sure thing. You know, you're not getting a Carlo Ancelotti. You're not getting a Jurgen Klopp. You're not getting a Pep Guardiola. You're not getting a, you know, a seasoned winner uh, in a manager. And also, yeah, it is a big risk, but we've made risk in the past. Deserve was a bit of a risk. Graham Potter was a bit of a risk. Um, Sammy Hoopier was a bit of a risk. <laughs> and we made it through that. So um, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only one that did pay off. But um, no, look, it, I think we'd be lying to ourselves if we would said he wasn't a risk. But I quite like it. I, I quite like that we've, we're doing it. Um, you never know what you're going to get with Brighton of Albion. And I think that's the beauty of supporting this great football club is that you never know what you're going to get. And if it pays off, it's a masterstroke. And if it fails, you can just put it down to, oh, well, you know, he's young, he's inexperienced. Uh, I'll, you know, chalk it off and go again. So uh, it feels like a, a bit of a win-win, really, in my eyes. But yeah, it's definitely not It's definitely not a, a guarantee or a sure thing f for sure. Mm. It's weird, like, just, yeah, just hearing a name. It's kind of a bit like Zerbe, I guess, like you said. Like, we had no idea who he was, and all of a sudden he was the second coming of Jesus, and we absolutely loved him. So hopefully it's the same. I've read quite a few bits about Fabian. He's a 
very passionate guy, runs into the fans to celebrate a bit like Zerbi's done. I think he accumulated like five or seven yellow cards last season yes. or something seven mental yellows. like that. Yeah. Was it, yeah, se- was it like seven ten. in the first half of the season, wasn't it? Mm. Which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, but um, I mean, yeah, so I think people probably know a lot about him anyway, but in case you don't, I, I believe he was assistant coach at St. Pauli last season. The guy got sat, manager got sacked, he took over. I uh, think he, after, when they were in the relegation zone or something like that, he took them to fifth. And then the following season, last year, managed to get a promotion with them to the Bundesliga, mm-hmm. which is an unbelievable achievement. I think he was a Bayern youth player with Emre Chan, worked with them in their coaching as well. Um, I think he, did he work with Germany as well or something like that? I'm not too sure, but he's, he's yeah. been with some big names. Ryan, maybe you can help me out with what he's been doing. I think he he was my age when he started his coaching career. He was twenty three, <laughs> which is which is pretty incredible. It's making me question everything about my life choices right now. But yeah, he was he was my age uh, when he started it. Then he then I think he he went into like non league and worked around um, a lot of big clubs. Then obviously he gets his move uh, into St Pauli. I think he was twenty nine, um, and that's just like crazy crazy age. I mean, you think about the amount of players that have been older than him. Um, and in that team that got them promoted, I think when he first took over, um, they were like three places off the bottom. And then he d- guided them to fourth, I think, in his first season and won the league the second season. Um, so a bit of a sort of like Chris Hewton impact on Brighton, I suppose, if you like. But whilst playing some absolutely crazy football, um, doesn't truly believe in positions. Likes Apparently he doesn't fluid. play with a midfield, according to one YouTube thumbnail, which I'm sure the whole fact you brought Yeah, I'm been. sure all of us have seen that video. No midfield? Yeah, I watched it twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's one of them where I think it sounds very bright and it sounds very us, doesn't it? Um, mm. You know, it shouldn't be too bad of a transition. But the good thing that I did see about him was he likes his set pieces defending as wow. well. So that's one thing that we have drastically lacked yeah, for a long time. So. <laughs> Scoring and, and doing like sort of basic defensive work as well, which would be quite nice to see again. But oh, basic um, defending, come on! Yeah, yeah, we, we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't yeah. do that round here. <laughs> we literally uh, haven't done good def- set pieces in what do you reckon, five years, I mean, easily. Mm. It'd be interesting to see like if we knew how far down the line Brian actually wanted to get this guy because I imagine, well, we could all know that this isn't our first choice, is it? Really, we wanted McKenna. Yeah, wanted other guys as well. So it was interesting to know. Yeah. When how many years down the line do we actually want to get this guy? Because he hasn't even been in the Bundesliga. Obviously, he was going to next season because they got him promoted or won the won the league. So it's a big risk, like I said. But I'm excited. I am excited to have a 31 year old, which is going to be mental. But it's very bright. And St. Pauli, a very hipster team. Football manager saves galore, and so it's very fitting that Brighton would then go for a hipster manager. I'm sure all the Adam Wharton loves are going to love this as well. Um, so hopefully we'll get some more fans. St. Paul are quite a cool club to be affiliated with. Hopefully they'll be supporting us as well because I'm sure they want Fabian to do a really good job in the Premier League as well as he's almost now one of their own. But um, a massive, massive, massive positive about Fabian is that he's a huge admirer of Pascal Gross. And that, that's mm. also been another dark cloud hanging over the club recently. Maz, like how, good, how like, excited were you when you read that, knowing that he wants to mm. keep and have discussions with Gross and make him an important player because yeah, he has been ever since he's been in the Prem yeah I saw, I saw a report today that um, yeah that they're uh, Frankfurt is in for him isn't it aren't they and they're really keen to get yeah Pascal. they're desperate to get him as well yeah which is obviously yeah worrying like you said we don't want to be losing Pascal Gross at any point but uh, yeah really good news that he's a big fan I'm sure any manager that come in would have been a big fan of Pascal and would make it their their main priority to keep him um, and I believe he's he'll leave on a free next season right as in if we don't sell him this season he'll be gone on a free mm. next is that is that correct in saying potentially Unless well I know we want to get we want to give him a contract thing, we want to give him a contract talks. extension. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. okay. Because, yeah, our, basically, if that is true, that he, let's say he stays this season coming and then he goes on a free next, I'll take that all day long. Because the fee we're going to get for him now is going to be... Like three mil. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's not even worth it. You, 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 I'd rather give you away for what free and for? get one more season, exactly. So, yeah, um, I, I'd much rather him stay one more season and then, yeah, if he's... Then give him his free will, I suppose. It sounds mm-hmm. like we're keep, keeping him captive, but um, no, I, <laughs> I, I, obviously, I want I want Pascal to stay another season. It's ultimately down to him. If, if he's keen to go back to Germany, I completely get it. It's it's He's now getting into the latter years of his career, so I would completely understand it if he wanted to leave. But obviously, as a Brighton fan, I want to keep him and I think he's integral to how we play and all yeah. the good things come through him. So, yeah, look... It, it, if he does go, he's been an incredible servant and, you know, I love him to pieces. He's been, he's been incredible. But of course, 
I would love him to stay. And hopefully this new manager being, you know, that German connection, fingers crossed, just gets that one more season out of him. Yeah. Um, and then I, actually, I think it'll be a natural time for him to go anyway after that, after the season coming. I think maybe yeah, by the transition, then... it could be nice to, for him to help out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like a, you know, at work when you have a, a handover, um, you know, <laughs> when you're leaving, giving that handover to the, yeah. to the, to the next one. So um, yeah, that, that's my piece on Pascal. <laughs> It is weird because like, he's always been, from what I've seen in the reports, he's worth three to five million, which is insane because to us, he's priceless. I mean, to say he's priceless, like uh, he's probably one of, um, well, he's our most important player to me. I remember last year I said that I'd rather have Gross start than Dunk start because I think Gross is way more vital to our team than Lewis Dunk is, despite all the blocks of stuff Dunk makes. But yeah, I mean, Ryan, it's quite disappointing when you see that he's only linked for, oh, he's only worth like three or five million because to us he's yeah his price is like he could be a 50 million pound player because he's that good for us yeah i i think that's maybe why we're looking at a contract anyway potentially if we get a bit more money out of him potentially if he leaves next summer regardless sign the contract to, to give us a little bit of leverage maybe but um yeah i think it's it'd be the right time for him to go when he goes of course but i don't feel like that right time's just yet i think he may be one more year um, particularly with the new German coach coming in. Well, say German, he's born in Texas, isn't he? So he's not fully German. Mm. He's also Swiss in there as well. But That um, that made me frightened when I saw American born. I was like, oh no, we haven't got a Yank in China. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't Jesse know Marsh. Jesse Marsh. No, please don't. <laughs> and then luckily, I immediately went on YouTube to hear his accent and he sounded very German and I was so relieved that we weren't going to have a Yank yeah, in China. Yeah, must after. admit. There's a, there's a lot of American Germans, well. isn't there? There's a lot, like, cause they're always based there for the for the war and then their families stay mm. generations time. history there, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Big Scrutiny up the Germans. So sure. Not World War II, though. Um, no. But yeah. Oh, sorry, go on, carry on, Ryan. <laughs> um, so, yeah. No, it looks good. Looks very good, actually. Um, it's interesting for us, isn't it? We're going through a, a new period. It's a new new part of the, the Brighton way, isn't it? We're not... Um, I feel like we're in a bit of a next crossroads. Maybe the, the, the chapter's over for the for the last piece and the Zerbi sort of closed it for us and... You know, it's, it's, it, we don't really know what to expect this summer. We don't really mm. know what to expect going into the new season. We're a little bit naive, a little bit blind, which is not always a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I don't like to blindly trust the club too much because you don't want to become completely delusional. But um, I definitely think we're probably best placed than anyone as as Brighton fans to be trusting the club. Um, and yeah, I feel I feel quite positive. I feel quite positive. I'm happy that we finally got something sort of you know, somewhat stable. Um, and, and, you know, this is it. barring any hiccups, although let's think that if you like to think something maybe happens in the next 24 hours um, and we'll be, a, we'll be in a good situation and roll on the yeah. Dennis Undav return as well, if you read the Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, I was, was going to get onto that. I was like, I feel obviously we're kind of positive and also don't really know what the season's going to look like. From what, when I've spoken to other people, other fans, they kind of think that we're probably going to be in danger, which I can understand why, because we've got a manager coming in that doesn't, no one's ever heard of really if you do yeah. say you know him, you're lying you probably just watch bundesliga 2 once not on a youtube video um or just a 15 minute clip of him like we've all well, like we all have but um yeah i would say i think some people are going to be doubting us and that could work as a favor to be fair to us because if people think that we're going to be pushovers and be relegation threatened then They've got another thing coming because our squad is way too good to go down. No matter, mm. Even if we didn't have a manager, it's only going to get like better this summer squad. as well. Mm. I feel like our players are nice enough as well to that we have no, we have no ego. So like uh, this random bloke coming in, I don't think any players are really going to kick up a fuss, Mass. I don't know if you could could name one one of our players that would be upset with no. a random uh, coming in. The, the only ones that like I suppose is the ones that have been disgruntled in the past. I suppose so like I mean Dennis Undab's a good example. I suppose he came out publicly, didn't he, and said that. He wants to leave and, you know, he doesn't want to go back to Brighton and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't yeah, I don't think there's any characters in, in the changing room that are going to come out and say things or, you know, disregard the manager or be disrespectful and that kind of stuff to look down on him. I think everyone's pretty good like that. We haven't really have, we haven't had much indiscipline in the squad uh, from my mm -hmm. memory anyway. Uh, there might be little pockets, which you guys probably know. But um, yeah, usually nine times out of 10, we're, we're pretty good with stuff like that. So yeah, I, I don't see any problems. I think people respect whoever comes in. And uh, yeah, as long as they're a good manager, I suppose you've got to respect them, right? There's mm. there's no reason why not to. And I can't imagine any of the players are going to be struggling to pick up his style of play. I know it's obviously a little bit different to De Zerbi and Potter, I imagine. But that's the whole philosophy of, of our club is getting managers that kind of play similar football so that when they do go, all our players know how to play under De Zerbi and Potter 
And yeah, Ryan, are you worried that there might be too much of a change or do you think it'll be quite a seamless transition? Um, I think there'll be transitions. I think there'll also be some struggles based on a couple of things. I think he likes to count the press quite quickly, um, quite athletic. So maybe that could be a problem for some of our players that maybe don't take up position so quickly, like your like your grosses, maybe like your Gilmores don't cover that space so well. Um, not to discredit them at what they're good at, which is what they're good at, but um, probably players like Caicedo, for example, who'd be very athletic and would get in the sort of cover them lines and, and you know interceptions and all that sort of thing. Um, we could need a few more of him, uh, maybe a few more athletes, a few more players that are going to be able to get across the whole of the pitch um, and also you know making them interceptions and breaking them barriers down. But I think other than that, I think the majority of it looks pretty fine. Um, we've got obviously very good at baiting the press. We're very calm under pressure, very good at building out from the back. So those sorts of things, I think, you know, we should be pretty okay with. Um, let's just hope he can try and add a bit of defensive stability and maybe, um, you know, Mr. Levi wants out in Chelsea, so we may as well uh, get some Chelsea fans. <laughs> I was, I was literally podcast, about to say, bring maybe. Levi Cole back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I, would, I think anyway. Bayern Munich want him, don't they? Company is obviously mm. a big fan and I can completely understand why that would be such a good sign and I'd love Levi back, even though he's been at Chelsea and probably been poisoned by the, I don't know, <laughs> I don't even want to go there, but by the shit club. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, another player, yeah, so we said Dennis Undav, uh, Brighton apparently, according to Antony that we want to keep him, got him for plans for next season, mm, I'd be absolutely buzzing with that, but do we want a player that doesn't, that, Ryan, yeah, I'm guessing Undav's heart isn't fully at Brighton now, after the season, the season he has had at Stuttgart. It's interesting because he's said it quite publicly and quite vocally and he's been quite you know, passionate about it. And, you know, and to be fair to him, he didn't say anything that was too bad. He was just quite honest. So um, I don't take any offence, to be honest. But when I look at it and I'm thinking, well, yeah, you quite blatantly don't want to come back. I mean, maybe that's changed with Herzler. Um, you know, I don't know how much you take from the Jao Pedro quotes last night. Um, but maybe there was a couple more fallouts, perhaps, between the Serbian players if things weren't going quite so well. Um, then we maybe got made public or, or, or know, knew about Um potentially and Dev could have been within them crossfires potentially I don't know this is yeah. all just speculation can't just say that can we but um, possibly that could change with Hertzler coming in and uh, maybe why uh, Andy put that article out but again it's all speculation I, I don't really know mm. and if anyone hasn't heard what uh, Jao Pedro said I think this was translated so it could be a bit iffy but mm. Jao Pedro on a podcast recently said in the beginning of the season brother forget it we'd argue after every training session he's talking about uh, De Zerbi He's very detailed. You can't even understand it. If I did one thing wrong, he'd be pissed. Pissed like picking up a ball and throwing it on the floor. I wouldn't even mess things up in practice. You do the right thing, but if you don't do it his way, he'd be upset. He'd be pissed over the silliest things. I left training uh, training many times upset. That's that Shell Pedro. That oh, does I'm not sound it. like Deserby at all. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Throwing, throwing bottles and no being upset. way. He was the, he was the calmest man on earth. I'm out of it. <laughs> Fake news. But yeah, I don't know, it's a bit strange on Yeah, Maybe you're right, Ryan. Maybe maybe Indav did also struggle because I imagine he did. He didn't suit Potter's well, system too well, really, either. Obviously, at the end of what, his what, Brighton season, he did, did well, but it took him a while to get it. Well, one thing I'd say as well is I think clearly Undav wants to be a starter. And that's my big question mark is, will he be a starter? And I doubt that. I, I think... You know, a manager will look at Ferguson, hopefully over his injuries, over his bad form. He'll probably look at him to be like, you know, the main man up top. You then got obviously Danny Welbeck still, who's, who's still alive and kicking somehow, still still playing well. And then, yeah, where does Undaf fall in that pecking order? I, I still put him third. But he's an incredible squad player to have when injuries come, when suspensions come, because you know he's a, he's a goal scorer. So it, it, I, I completely get where Undaf's coming from. I, you know, you want to be starting each game, but... Will he? I, I, I very much mm. doubt it. And if he if he can't accept that, then fair play. I, I would be looking to go as well. So I, yeah. I completely get Especially both he's sides. Got Champions League and obviously he mm. clearly quite loves, doesn't he? So it'd be difficult. Yeah. Be difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a bit surprised about it, to be honest. So, Ryan, we've only got you for five more minutes. Uh, which one do you talk yeah. about? So we've got Bloom wanting a Scottish team, bit of mare. Jason Steele linked with Southampton, Rushworth linked with Ipswich. Uh, transfer news of. Drewsby Hall and Christ Sensor Somerville. I, I think we should do Dunk England slander because that's been quite fun. Oh, it's not been fun it for Dunk, to... but why is oh, Dunk mate, been getting you know cooked? He's been getting absolutely cooked online. So, you so heavy. This is actually so annoying. And 
Uh, you, uh, you, if, I, if this was three years ago, I'd be more annoyed. Obviously, he's had a really bad season. Well, I say really bad. He's had a bad season by his standards of the last 10 years. Um, but it's probably been his, okay, his, wor- his worst season of them times. But he's been very good for us, hasn't he? Still, um, he's been in Europe with us. He's been leading us out from the front. He's been very good um, with his feet. He's been, I think he's got one of the most touch, one of the most passes in the league. Um, so strong defensively. Um, obviously, when it comes to them big games, people remember the Lukaku moments um, and for England. It's a shame that people have to remember that. But look, he's a very stable option. I think hopefully Gareth Southgate knows that now. Um, mm-hmm. Although it looks like it's probably going to be Mark Gay who probably starts with John Stones. I don't think that you've got a problem if you were to switch that with Dunk. Because crazy as that might sound to some of the English fans that are screaming Branthwaite because that's what the media told them to say. To be fair, um, to be fair Ryan, I probably would have picked Branthwaite over Lewis Dunk if I'm completely honest. Left footed as well, to be yeah, fair. That, yeah, that's, I was about yeah, to say that. Is. I know it might sound crazy, but as in sound bad because he's our captain, but I would have picked Branthwaite over Dunk as well, to yeah, be honest with you. It's a bit more athletic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's weird because yeah. Dunk was getting so much stick on Twitter and social media that the Brighton admin had to put out the confirmation of him chesting back to Jason Steele and Barbara yeah. Morgan, which was quite funny, just because yeah. he was getting cooked so much. But I know <laughs> we know much. we know Dunk can be incredible in his day. It's just, yeah, I think maybe the pressure of England sometimes maybe gets. It's just from, do you know what it is for me? The, the, out of all the seasons he's had, pop, like Ryan said, arguably his best for his standards, uh, not the best for his standards, and it's the one season he gets called up to go to yeah. a major tournament. And it's like, yeah, the timing of it, it just, it, yeah, it's it's just not his best season. And we all know how good he can be. He knows how good he can be. It's just, yeah. And his last two games, as, as Ryan mentioned again, they weren't the best example of what Lewis Dunk is all about because he got absolutely cooked. So, um, yeah, England fans yeah. obviously, because look, England fans don't watch our games week in, week out. They don't know how good he can actually be. They just watch him for England. And if you're playing badly for England, then that's what they go off by. So I, I get yeah. why the, the casual England fans will think that and will say that. They'll be like, well, he was crap, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you haven't seen him week in, week out like we have. And we know all his qualities, what he can do on his day, how incredible he can be. But just to caveat that as well, I'm just like I'm just picturing it now. It's the quarterfinals. England playing France, and yeah. Kylian Mbappe is running at Lewis Dunk. Now let's let's be. And he all... crunches him, takes him out, launches the ball. <laughs> right? He's then making a late run. We've got Bakayo Saka on the ball. We've got Phil Foden on the other side carrying right. Drew <laughs> Bellingham sort of patting him on the back, saying, "Lewis, it's all right. You come up with me, mate." And then he comes up. Foden back across, knocks it down, dunk mm. back post right there. That's yeah. the winner. I just the winner against France kick. through. Yeah, yeah, bicycle kick. <laughs> I do, li- I do yeah. like your version of events, Ryan. However, <laughs> see, I, I just changed more... the version of events, but it's still pretty close to being true. So it's fine. Yeah, yeah. However, I think it'll be complete, complete opposite. Whereas Kylian Mbappe absolutely skins him about six seven <laughs> times. He, he falls over and then he puts the top bins and England lose four 0 So, but yeah, look, yeah, uh, like, he takes that's... it past Dunk, snaps Dunk's ankles, and then enjoyed it so much, comes back and does it again. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, then he comes back again and does it again and Dunk's just all on the floor like yeah Dunk against them Bappe isn't a great thought but no, Dunk against yeah. some others could be he's, okay we'll yeah he, basically he's not great against like brute pace or brute strength mm. I, I feel that's his that's his so he's going to have a great time against Mitrovic in our group isn't he <laughs> yeah yeah I'm pretty yeah. sure Mitrovic is in our group I don't know but um, oh, that, that's good oh, also quickly admin if you're listening to this why on earth did you put a picture up of Mark Gay and Lewis Dunk on the Instagram that's mental yeah good show actually admin what's that was crazy <laughs> that was wild from you it's like um, that meme isn't it where you know when like the they, they have the flags the crips and the bloods yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. but like yeah just that was just mental it was dunk walking is the first and then the slide bit behind it was gay and dunk it was like weird maybe just post the only dunk one but you know, the comments seemed to be actually quite nice when i read them there was a palace fan being like palace fan here but respect come on england so i was like fair <laughs> not bad um right ryan you've got two more minutes what should we quickly do jason Steele he's probably ran out of golf courses in brighton so it looks like he's following adam lalana to <laughs> southampton um, <laughs> thank you for your time right. i would actually like you to stay jason because i think you're an incredible bloke and probably really really good in tr- changing him so if you can say that'd be great but i'd rather bark yeah. plays carl rushworth could be going to ipswich on a perm or on loan surely, so surely the carl rushworth thing right surely he stays if yeah. Still goes. Still I, goes. I was just yeah. about to say that. Logical way I can possibly. Surely, because also as well, like this pathway for goalkeepers at the moment is, is limited, right? We're seeing we've got an incredible youth, uh, like young. Uh, we had James Beadle. We had. Oh, do we still have? No, we still have James Beadle. Yes. Yeah, we have got have James, James, yeah. yeah, James Beadle and Carl Rushworth, who are just two great young goalkeepers who have been linked with some big teams. To, to then not be get a pathway, I just think it's a bit unfair. And and they've been around. Like even remember, um, who's the one? Um, um, oh, who's the one who got it from Plymouth? 
yeah, Walton. Walton, Christian Walton, that was oh, it. Yeah. Like at the Walton. time, he was touted to be like, you know, the next big mm. thing, and we just never gave him a chance. And I just feel like sometimes with our goalkeeping that avenue, home game it's difficult. Wigan was special. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would like just quickly. Yeah, I would like to see Carl Rushworth stay and be that third choice. Oh no, sorry, second choice. Um, and then yeah, wherever else happens, but mm. I don't know what's going to go. On. And then. Second to last penultimate. Uh, Tony Vlue wants to invest in a Scottish club. He's already had a Belgian club in his stable. I'm just reading off Owen BHFC's tweets all the time. And now he fancies adding a Scottish team to his uh, arsenal. Well, Bloom previously to took an interest Highlands in Hibs. For his summer holidays. <laughs> yeah. But then the Bournemouth guy, Tom Foley, stepped in and took Hibs off us, which is a shame because I like Hibs. So could be getting a Scottish team, which would be fun. And then, according to the Sun, Brighton are going to be interested in, renew their interest in Somerville and Dewsbury Hall. I would love that. That would be great. Two great yeah, times for us that both I'm happy we'll with. We'll be both good. Yeah. Dewsbury Hall, I believe, a little bit more than the other, but... Yeah, um, but although Chelsea and Man United both want Dewsbury Hall as well. Obviously, Chelsea do. That's, that goes without saying. They probably want Tommy as well because we want him as yeah. yeah. per. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that is it, to be honest. Ryan, going to go to Glass Animals and we're going to leave with this song yeah. in your head. Actually, what, Ryan, Sometimes you say what song? Sometimes I think about, I think about, about you, you. Late night in the middle of... I don't know the lyrics, but I like it. Up the road. Yeah. Not the best so, road either, to be fair. So pray yeah. for me. But yeah, we're going to end up there and uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know what happens. Stay happen. safe. Stay safe, Ryan. Yeah, stay safe. Stay <laughs> humble. Um, and you won't get whatever London has to deal. Um, no, I'm not going to go that far. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, enjoy the Glass Animals. Enjoy that one song that they had. That was good. Hopefully it's in everyone's head listening now. For the FIFA rest 17 as well. If you know, you know. Play yeah. the Glass Animals song, FIFA 17, called Youth. Guarantee you, all of the FIFA heads out there will remember it 100%. Oh, maybe. But yeah, apart yeah. from that, you won't remember any. Cool. Mm. And Fabian yeah, Herzler. We trust we're going to have an incredible season. Tony's going to back us to the moon in the summer and we'll be back in Europe and probably win the Premier League as well. So see you guys. Subscribe, reasonable. like and everything like that. Comments below. Fabian Hive. Peace. Yeah, Hertzball. Let's go. Hertzball. No more years of Hertz. Yeah, comment below. Hertzball. Bye. Love that.